Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And today we're going to be looking at restoring this vintage 1989 Kenner's real Ghostbusters Dracula figure. Now the Dracula figure was released in the Monsters wave and it's one of the most common ones to have bits missing because he's supposed to come with a fabric cape that clips onto his hand that's also held onto his neck using a sort of little necklace with a little uh, uh, clasp on the front of it and always those are missing. In fact if you go on eBay you can find the figure loose like this relatively cheap but if you want him with his cape it will cost you a large amount of money. So today I thought I'd uh, go through the process of making a new cape for him and also making a new clasp and necklace to hold that cape in place because I think all of those things we can make something that will do the job and look rather nice on this figure. The Dracula monster came in a wave of toys that featured quite a few sort of classic monsters from Universal's back catalogue. So you can see here this is the Dracula monster in the middle. Then we've got the mummy, Frankenstein, Quasimodo and Wolfman. Uh, the zombie monster I'm not quite sure where that's from. I think that is just one that's been made up. As you can see it's quite a nice wave of figure and you get to see a Dracula there with his cape and with the cape he looks quite cool. Without the cape he doesn't look that exciting which is why I want to sort of get this uh, all fixed up because then he can go back on display and properly look like Dracula. So this is the figure I've got. I actually picked this up off eBay recently. I think it only cost me about five pounds. Got a little bit of damage to the paint on his chest there, but uh, we should be able to fix that. And also a few little chips on his hands. Uh, these figures that have sort of larger stomachs like this that are painted uh, tend to get damaged. So uh, it's a fairly common issue, but uh, yeah, we can certainly fix that. But without the cape, he does look a little bit odd. His feature basically is that the cape sort of hooks onto his hand. And when you squeeze his leg, he opens up his arms and reveals uh, his fangs that are coming out of his mouth there at the top. So it's quite a nice little feature, very common to all of these uh, Kenner Ghostbusters toys. Uh, but yeah, without that cape it just looks a bit strange. So I put a, a sort of a note out on my uh, social media if anybody could help me with a scan of the original cape. And I have to say a massive thank you to uh, Premslaw Borkowski who very kindly sent me a scan of his cape. And from that I was able to make this pattern. So this is a nice pattern sort of, of matching as close as I can possibly get to the original cape. I had to undo bits of it because there's a bit of sewing that goes on at the top. But, uh, the actual shape of this is as close as I can get. And he also very kindly sent me scans of the little clasp that's on the front of the cape. So the clasp actually has a piece of plastic that wraps around the neck and holds it in place. I'm going to modify that but I still need this little clasp at the front because that is quite a key feature. You can see it's got a little sort of bat shape on it. So what I've done is I've made this pattern. This will be available for free from toyploy.com so if you want to make your own that you can go and grab that. So the first thing I need to do is actually to make a sort of recreation of this little clasp. Uh, this is actual scale. You can see I've made a little sort of grey silhouette version and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that onto some one millimeter thick styrene sheet and cut that out and then try and sculpt something using some milliput and try and make something that matches this. I will put a little fixing on the back of the styrene as well so that we can attach it to the cape when we come to make that. But this is the first thing we need to do. Make a new clasp. And the reason I put a blown up version is so you can actually see uh, sort of all the details on it. If I just to show the actual size it's very hard to see the detail. So this is a guide for you to if, uh, make a sort of sculpt of your own. But let's go ahead and we'll make this little clasp first. So to make this small clasp what I'm using is some one millimeter thick styrene sheet. This is uh, stuff you can pick up from most model shops or again you can buy it on eBay. I've got a few little off cuts here which I think are going to be about the right size just to, rather than sort of wasting my big sheet. I always keep little bits. If you cut something or make up something else just keep the little off cuts because you never know when they're going to come in handy. What I'm going to do is very sort of roughly just cut out this template. There you go. As I say, it needs to be rough, doesn't need to be perfect at this stage. And I'm going to use a little bit of Pritt stick just on the back of that to stick it to my piece of styrene, like so. And then I can carefully cut around this. I'm going to use a knife and I'm going to use some plastic nippers to cut that out and I'll sort of file it and shape it and make it as neat as I can. I'm also going to make a little sort of fixing on the back somehow because I want some way that we can uh, push a piece of elastic or something through. So it needs to have a little sort of C-shaped bit of plastic on the back of it. So I'm going to make something again just with a scrap. And, uh, and once that's all done we can then sculpt on top of this with some milliput. But let's get this stage made first.
and this is what I've made. So you can see that is the same shape as that little template I showed you earlier. And on the back of it, I've just added this little sort of C shape of bits of styrene just stuck on using some uh, AMA plastic weld. And that is what I'm going to thread some elastic through in the end. But uh, the important part really was that that shape match this. I'm now going to sculpt on top of that using some milliput and I've shown this before many times on my channel. It's a two-part epoxy sort of modeling clay. You mix the two parts together and then you can sort of sculpt it. So uh, my challenge really is to try and get something that looks like that. Obviously at this scale it's going to be quite tricky but I will do my best and then um, yeah once that's painted I think we'll have something that does the job quite nicely. Even this if you just wanted to stop at this stage and just paint this black it would look all right but I think uh, as I've got the, the materials here, I might as well try and make this. So uh, let's go and see what I can make. I don't think it's going to fool anyone, uh, you know, if you look too close up, but the overall shape and sort of texture of it, I'm pretty pleased with. It's looking a lot like uh, what we've got there on the image. I've just got a few little sort of fine details to put back in. I'm using a knife here just to give it some shape. And I'm using this thing called a dipper or a dotter. You can see it's basically a tool with a little uh, ball on the end of it. You can get these in multiple sizes. It's very good for actually putting glue on things, but I've just been using it to uh, shape this and uh, give it some sort of details. So as I say, it's not perfect, but it's a sort of close enough match. By the time that is painted black and uh, put on the figure, I think that's going to look pretty reasonable and I'm uh, very happy with how that's going. Uh, so with Milliput you have to wait 24 hours for it to harden. So I'm just going to put this aside and I'll carry on with another project and tomorrow I'll come back and finish this one off. It's now a day later and the milliput has had time to dry and this is what I'm left with. As I say, it's not a perfect sort of version of the little clasp, but it's going to do a fine job. By the time that's painted black and we put a gloss coat on top of it, I think that will look really quite nice. So that is the next thing we're going to do is do the uh, sort of paint repair. So uh, poor old Dracula here has a bit of a worn chest uh, that should be easily uh, sort of painted over with some white. He's got a few little marks on his fingers, only a couple. So I've got a mixture of uh, colours here to do that and obviously we need the black for doing the clasp and he's got some minor paint rubs on his hair. So uh, the paints I'm using are Vallejo model colours. I've got uh, black which is uh, number 70.950. I've got white which is 70.951. I also have a blue which is called Andrea blue which is 70.841. This isn't a particularly close match but I reckon if I mix that with some white and maybe a bit of black I'll get the right shade of blue. And then once all of those are dry I have a clear satin in varnish to put over the top of them to give them the same sort of sheen. You can see that it's not gloss but it's not matte so this will give it that same sort of sheen once everything is done. So really I'm just going to get sort of painting and mixing. I'll start with the black and the white because they're the easiest ones and then I'll mix the blue and uh, get something that works but yeah, I think by the time that's painted that will look really nice.
Right, everything is all dry and as you can see Dracula is looking really quite nice. His hands are all blue again and the uh, white on his uh, shirt is now nice and white. I did actually mix a little bit of uh, the yellow into this which is 70.953 just because the paint on this one has possibly sort of got a bit sun damaged over time so it's not pure white and just adding a little bit of yellow toned it in quite nicely. So that's Dracula done and then here if you can see it, is the tiny little clasp all painted up. As I say, it's actually really quite nice. I'm very pleased with how this has turned out. It's not a perfect representation of the clasp, but it will really do the job. By the time that is on the front of the figure with the uh, cape in place, I think that's going to look very nice. So let's get on and make the cape. P -O -Y -P -O -L -L -O -I. Now I've already made a bit of preparation on the cape by uh, putting a bit of double-sided tape just around the edge of it and then cutting it out. It takes a little while to cut this out just because there's so many sort of complicated shapes along the bottom. The double-sided tape is uh, how we affix it to uh, the material when we're cutting that out. It just makes it easier. You can pin it but I prefer using double-sided tape. And when you cut my patterns out make sure to cut the uh, grey line away all around the edge and you'll end up with something like this. Now for the material this is called toy knit or uh, loop fleece. It's the exact same sort of finish of material that you get on Star Wars figures and I think it's a close match for what Dracula should have. Uh, I picked this up in Japan a couple of years ago but you can now get this online so I'll put a link in the description as to where you can get this from. It's pretty cheap. You, know, you can buy it from China. It takes a few weeks to get here but it's uh, well worth having a load in stock especially if you're restoring old toys from the 70s and 80s because uh, this is pretty much the exact material you'll want to use. So what I've done is I've laid this with the nice side down. This is the back of the material. I'm going to take all of the double-sided tape off of this and then take some of the stick away by uh, sticking it onto my uh, trousers a few times because you don't want this to be too sticky. Uh, you just want it to sort of gently hold it in place really. Uh, and then once that's done I'll stick it onto the material and I will cut this out and we can start constructing the cape properly. Um, you can pin this as I say. I prefer to do it with double-sided tape just because it's a bit easier to work with and it actually holds it all in place sort of especially on something like this where you've got lots of tiny little pieces. Uh, these small bits of double-sided tape uh, just tend to hold it uh, a little bit more firmly in place and make it easier to cut out but I think uh, professional sewers would do this all with pins. With the main part of the cape cut out there's still two little bits to cut finally which are the sort of finger holes I'm going to say uh, because if we look at uh, Dracula you can see he's got quite large thumbs and he's supposed to put his thumbs I think through those or at least some of his fingers uh, to make it look like uh, he's holding the cape open. So for that I've just got a smaller pair of scissors and I'm going to try and cut as small a hole as I possibly can. I probably could use a hole punch but I think that's going to make too big a hole so I'm just going to use these and see what happens. That looks like that's worked. There's definitely a hole there. You can just about see my finger through it. So I'll do the other one and then we can take the uh, pattern away from the fabric. Now we've got the cape cut out we've got one tiny bit of sewing to do and you need to fold this sort of collar piece down so it looks something like that uh, and then we can sew just along the bottom edge of that. What we want is a little sort of tunnel that we can uh, thread a piece of elastic through. On the original it was a bit of plastic that you push through that but I'm going to do a bit of elastic so that's that folded over. I have a needle and thread here already set up with some uh, black cotton in it so I'm just going to very carefully sew along this. Uh, it shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. And there we go, that's it sewn looped over. So you can see that now does look much more like uh, the original cape. What we've got to do though is thread a piece of elastic through there. I've bought this elastic for another project. This is just an off cut that I've got. And this is a flat elastic and it's about three millimeters uh, sort of across. So it's a pretty really thin piece of elastic. But I think if we thread that through, we can then tie that around Dracula's neck, looping through the little uh, 
brooch sort of clasp thing that I made earlier. I was thinking I could then just sort of sew the elastic into a loop, but I'm not very good at sewing elastic. So my plan now is just to tie it in a knot and sort of push the knot inside of this collar. I don't think you'll even notice it once that's done. So I've got to push this piece of elastic through that tunnel that I've made. I'm sure I could have made my life easier by just sort of sewing around the elastic, but uh, in this instance, I've done it the hard way. So I'm just uh, pushing the elastic through with a screwdriver. I think that should do, do the job. It's uh, nice and simple. I'm sure there's easier ways of doing all of this. But there you go, there's a bit of elastic through that loop. And now we can uh, tie this onto the figure and uh, put the little clasp on. And I think um, that should look quite nice. Right, let's give this a go. So there's the elastic. There's the little clasp that I made, get it up the right way. And I'm gonna push the elastic through the little back piece that I've made quite neatly there. So we are just going to tie a knot. Um, I'm sure there's a neater way of doing this, but I don't think you'll see this knot by the time it's all sort of hidden inside. Let's just try this. If it doesn't work, I can always untie it and sew it. But um, I think this should, should work. So there's that tied on. If I cut off the ends, it's a sort of quite short. I can then rotate that piece around just by pulling the other end of it. And we'll get that inside the cape. I think it's probably easier to do this off of the figure. All right, so yes, I'm pretty happy with that. That does look really quite sort of convincing, even just with a piece of elastic on it. We can now get his arms ready. So if I uh, raise up his arms, and I think these should hook onto the thumbs. I'm guessing that's what I've seen in sort of most shots of uh, this figure. So if we hook that one onto his other thumb there. like that. Yeah, now he looks like Dracula. And if I squeeze his legs together, he should open up his arms and open up the cape. And there we go. That is uh, Dracula now with a replacement cape and a little replacement brooch or a clasp on the front. Yeah, lovely. He looks much more like Dracula to me. And here is the finished Dracula figure. I'm really very pleased with how this has come out. It's a lot of work to get the little class made. The cape actually is not too bad. Once you've got a sort of decent pattern for it, you can make a cape quite quickly. But making that clasp so it looks, you know, as close to the original as possible uh, took a little bit of work. Uh, you can do this without doing that. I would say you could just make the cape and put a bit of elastic around his neck and he would still look pretty good. But uh, in this instance, I wanted to try and make it as close as possible. And as I say, the pattern for this is available for free from toyploy.com. So if you have this particular real Ghostbusters Dracula figure, then uh, go there, grab that and uh, see what you can do. I've done a few other uh, Ghostbusters restorations in uh, the recent months. So I'll put a link at the end of this video to those. So check them out because I've done all sorts of things on repairing proton packs and repairing Fright Features Janine and all sorts of things. And I hope there will be more to come in uh, future videos. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified each time I a new video and thanks for watching thanks for watching toy ploy subscribe for more great videos you can also follow toy ploy on twitter facebook and instagram